Get into meditation posture. <sighs> okay, so nice straight back. And feel the weight of yourself on your cushion or your chair. Stabilize and balance yourself. And then pull your awareness up your spine, all the way up through your neck, all the way up through the crown of your head. And imagine an invisible line pulling you up towards the sky. And that same line going down through your tailbone, connecting you to the earth. And just find a way to feel aligned earth and sky, left and right, safe in your space. And we'll revive our motivation using some of the verses from three principal aspects. Swept away by the current of the four powerful rivers, tied by the tight bonds of karma so hard to undo, caught in the iron net of self-grasping, completely enveloped by the total darkness of ignorance. Endlessly reborn in cyclic existence, ceaselessly tormented by the three sufferings, thinking that all mothers are in such a condition, generate the supreme mind of enlightenment. So using your awareness of renunciation to tie you into the mind of enlightenment, to feed it, to underpin it. All of these things you've become disillusioned with, all of these things you seek to be free from are also shared by all mother sentient beings. And so with that bodhicitta motivation, now very briefly shift your focus to the breath, allowing any surface distractions to settle.
and just be with the directness and the simplicity of your own breath. If you're feeling agitated, focus on the breath at your navel, where it rises and falls. And if you're feeling sleepy, focus at the nostrils, where the air comes and goes. And thinking in order to achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, I need to develop the causes. Therefore, shifting to analysis, starting with the essential foundation, immeasurable equanimity. You can think the equanimity prayer from the Medicine Buddha Puja which says, all sentient beings, although self and all appearances are dharmadhatu by nature, have not realized it thus. I shall endow with happiness and the causes of happiness. I shall free from suffering and the causes of suffering. I shall make inseparable from the happiness that is without suffering and I shall set in equanimity the cause of well-being, free from attachment, aversion, and partiality. So particularly that equanimity line, may we be free from attachment, aversion, and partiality. Free from pushing, pulling and indifference. All sentient beings, friend, enemy and stranger, only want happiness and don't want suffering. And all sentient beings are sometimes skillful and sometimes unskillful in trying to achieve that. All sentient beings, including myself, have innate ignorance. which leads to the development of afflictions, which leads to suffering that we don't want.
and that suffering, afflictions, and ignorance are all removable. The relative nature of the mind is just clarity and awareness. It can reflect and perceive, is ethically neutral, but has Buddha potential. can develop into complete enlightenment, perfect happiness, perfect compassion. So let the equality of all sentient beings reinforce your equanimity toward all sentient beings and really connect with that foundation. unbiased goodwill. And think all these sentient beings, those skillful ones, those unskillful ones, those ones that are kind, that I have affection for, those ones that are harmful or irritating, that I have aversion for, those strangers that I'm indifferent to, I try to even out and have this open heart of equanimity. And every single one of them has been my mother. And all of the beings who are currently animals have been my mother. Those I call pests, those I'm afraid of, those pets I love. And all of the sentient beings who are currently in suffering states filled with hatred and fear or addiction and miserliness, those who are drunk with pleasure, competitiveness and jealousy, haughty with pride, all of these sentient beings throughout the universe have been my mother many times. Time is beginningless. Sentient beings, though incredibly numerous, numberless, are still finite. So see how it feels to repeat to yourself, all sentient beings have been my mother. 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 Let it land.
And when all these sentient beings have been my mother, they have at one point or another, possibly many times, shown the kindness of the idealized mother figure. That selfless love, that unconditional love, putting you before herself. So think of some memories with your own primary caregiver or mothers that you've seen. Really picture the way in which all sentient beings have been so kind to you. The way they've looked after you when you were a tiny baby and so fragile, couldn't even look after yourself. All of your needs were dependent on her. She kept you alive, kept you safe and warm, modeled the love that you needed to learn to carry into the rest of your life. There were many activities she wanted to do, knowledge she wanted to pursue, sleep she wished she could have, that she put aside for your sake. When we were in the animal realm, she often carried us on her back. Navigating all sorts of dangerous areas to find us food, to show us how to find it. In so many realms, the mother was the first teacher, the first guru, Lama. And so you can picture the sentient being in your life who is troubling you right now. The one who it's not nice to be around. And think that one specifically. That one also was so kind to me in the past. So many difficult samsaric things have happened between us since then that we've forgotten how close we once were. And then from a secular perspective, you can think about your ancestors, your bloodline, 
whether it's something you know about or something you can only guess at. We know history well enough to realize the people before us suffered many hardships. Trying to get food and resources, housing and safety, took a lot of time and effort. And we are their legacy. And so bring the two ideas together, both Dharma and secular, and let that nourish your heart into a way that makes you feel genuinely that you want to repay the kindness of your ancestors, of your kind mother sentient beings, of all of the love that went into you, that brought you this far all of the care and compassion that fed you, that got you to this point. Imagine it warming your heart into an organic gratitude, an authentic appreciation that genuinely wants to repay the kindness not from guilt, but from joy. How do we repay their kindness? What do they want? All my kind mother sentient beings. They want happiness, safety, peace. So the first step in repaying their kindness is allowing your own heart to become that of love. And you think, may all sentient beings be well. May all sentient beings be happy. May they have happiness and its causes. And another way to repay their kindness is to free them from what they don't want. And what they don't want is suffering, pain, problems. And so wish them freedom from that suffering. Let your mind and your heart become compassion. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and its causes. And now think that that love and that compassion change from being passive to being active. That we don't just passively want them to have happiness and want them to be free from suffering, but we've decided that it's our responsibility. We don't want to just hope for the best. We want to help bring it about. So what is the way to facilitate sentient beings 
having happiness and freedom from suffering. And just see if you can allow that shift from passive to active, becoming that highest intention, that great compassion. May I, as an individual, bring about the happiness and freedom of suffering for all my kind mother sentient beings. And not only do I want to shift from passive to active, I want to shift from symptoms relief to actually uprooting the causes. But how can I do that? I can't change another sentient being's karma. I can't literally take or give them anything. But what I can be is a more powerful condition. Right now I am a condition, sometimes for their happiness to ripen, sometimes for their suffering to ripen. I am a condition not a cause, but still a factor in their experience. In order to become the most powerful and the most positive, beneficial condition, I must become a Buddha. This is the real repayment of kindness. So allow your mind to settle into bodhicitta, this uncontrived or starting to become uncontrived aspiration to become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. I don't want to just put a Band-Aid on the little pains of their life. I actually want to bring a huge wave of benefit to their life, bringing out the best in them, helping them heal themselves, giving accurate, timely advice, unconditional love, perfect wisdom, skillful means. And just be with Bodhicitta as best as you can. and dedicate all of the energy of this practice for that enlightenment.
경 마루바 레이사와 부바쇼 May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that is not arisen arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. May the precious view of emptiness that has not arisen arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. And you can relax your attention. So thanks everyone. And um, I've uh, emailed Tal the handouts from today. And so just keep working on bodhicitta and um, keep relating it to renunciation. So don't leave what you've touched before and um, slowly, slowly, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks guys. <laughs>